Welcome back to Third Eye Weekly. Joining us once again on the broadcast is Dr. Michael A. Smith here to talk to us about fat distribution and how it's related to cardiovascular disease. Thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Of course. So of there course. are two different kinds of fat. So we're wondering what are they and how do they how are they distributed throughout the body? Well, okay. So you have brown fat, which is the fat that uh, insulates. It covers your organs. Uh, brown fat, by the way, is really easy to burn away. Um, and then you have that contrast that to the white fat, which I call the pinch an inch fat, the mm -hmm. stuff you can grab onto. That stuff is stubborn and it stays mm -hmm. there and it really represents energy you haven't burned. Mm -hmm. So there's brown fat, white fat, and white fat really is the focus because that's the stuff that sticks around and is causing our, our weight issues. Right. Yeah. Uh, in, in, a, in a younger age group, 20, 30s, you start exercising, brown fat burns quickly. It pretty much goes. Mm -hmm. But it's that white fat that's stubborn. So we're always trying to find ways to manage that uh, that type of fat cool mm -hmm. yeah and with a lot of fat um comes some diseases like sure know, diabetes yeah. um or you, you know it keep going a a heart attack i mean what are what are some of the other ones that maybe not, are lesser known cancer yeah yeah when you're overweight there's a significant increase of cancer maybe not right now but later in life uh mm -hmm. women that are overweight I have a greater risk for breast cancer later, a greater risk a risk for ovarian cancer, for men it's mm -hmm. prostate cancer. Uh, there's even an interesting study showing um, if you're overweight as a child, there's an increased risk of brain tumor mm -hmm. later in life. So cancer, and then and then this one, I don't mean to scare your, your listeners, but it's true. If you're overweight, you have an increased risk of premature death. Mm -hmm. And that's death from any cause. Mm -hmm. Any cause, you have a, there's an increased risk of it when it comes to death if you're overweight. I mean, that's kind of wow. scary. So the, just death in general. Death in general, yeah. <laughs> and, and I don't know, when I said that once, a person asked me, well, is that true for like accidents? Yeah, people that are overweight tend to die in accidents more than people that are underweight. Makes sense. Yeah, so mm -hmm. a lot of it probably has to do with when, you know, you are sick and you're overweight, you're not as active, you're laying in the bed more. Mm -hmm. uh, when people are immobile, that causes a lot uh, of problems like in the hospital and stuff. But yeah, so... Everything you said, plus cancer, plus death. So it's pretty bad. Pretty <laughs> yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we want to we want to get back to a good, healthy weight for each individual person. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's been recent research about a new kind of, or not a new kind, but just a kind of peptide that can yeah. possibly help battle some of these. White fats. Yeah, it's really, this was an interesting story. It started in India. Mm -hmm. uh, they were trying to figure out how to make chicken more lean, not, not, in, not for consumption, but um, the chickens that are more lean uh, are easy to take care of. Mm -hmm. And so they started trying different uh, supplements for the chickens, different uh, types of protein. And they also tried something that probably you guys have drank before, and it's called brewer's yeast, mm -hmm. Saccharomyces, right? Um, I don't really know how they got to trying Saccharomyces with the chicken, but they did. And it was the only thing that worked. The chicken became leaner. They were easier to take care of. They were healthier. So they started doing some studies into what was in the Saccharomyces. It obviously is not just for brewing yeast now. Right. Uh, and they discovered a peptide called neuropeptide Y. And this peptide is really cool because it does something that no other appetite control supplement does. And that is control appetite at the brain level. Mm -hmm. So it's actually telling your brain that you've had enough to eat, that you're full. You don't need to keep eating. It controls it at the most important place. And so when people consume this, um, I mean, we're decreasing appetite by 20, 30 wow. percent. Uh, so calorie consumption is down uh, and that that's obviously helping with weight loss. But then it also does something else. It has a dual action. It's not only helping the brain. It actually helps the fat cell not be so fat. So it's kind of like wanting fat cells to be skinnier because they can because they can burn some of that stored fat so it actually helps fat cells be skinny wow yeah it's pr pretty cool yeah and yeah. how would somebody take you know how, how could you apply this to real world life like how can we consume that well it comes in a capsule form yeah. i mean you can't you're not drinking beer is not going to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's not yeah what we what we've done is um there's different ways of actually taking the supplement you can do a full Saccharomyces capsule, which is which is more like a probiotic because it is a healthy yeast species. It is good for your gut. Uh, that may help some, but you probably want to do what we've done at Life Extension is we've we've concentrated that neuropeptide Y mm -hmm. uh, in, in a capsule. So you're getting some of the Saccharomyces, but you're really getting a, a standardized concentrated form of that peptide. So the results are going to be better than just like taking a full uh, probiotic. 
Yeah. Okay. And what does the research look like currently for these peptides? Have there been clinical trials? Yeah. Yeah. So there's been, uh, it, well, obviously it started with the chickens, <laughs> but now it, now we do have human clinical trials. As I said, in humans, a decrease in calories, 28, 30%, uh, about four or five pounds of weight loss in only four to six weeks, wow. which is really, that's, and that's, a, that's still a safe number. You don't want to mm -hmm. lose too much weight too fast. So it still falls in uh, within a safe time period. Uh, in, in a safe amount, but it, it, it's pretty significant when you can lose four pounds by just taking a peptide. Definitely. Yeah. And that's human clinical studies. And is that in conjunction with maybe exercise or certain it other variables? Yeah, it should be. But in these mm -hmm. studies, they didn't. Wow. Really? Because they always want to really just test the supplement. So what mm -hmm. they do in these studies is they say, they'll put them on like a standard diet. So everybody's on the same amount of calories, but it's not necessarily decrease in calories and not like going on a diet. So they say, okay, you two are going to be in this study. You're going to eat 2000 calories. You're going to walk 30 minutes a day. So everybody is even. Mm -hmm. And then when you test the, the material, if there's weight loss, you know, it came from that material. It didn't come from decreasing calories. Mm -hmm. So in this study and in most weight loss studies, lifestyle doesn't change really. It's just consistent with everybody. And so we know that the weight loss effect is coming from the peptide. Interesting. Mm, that is interesting. And you were speaking a little bit about some other things that can happen to the skin due to obesity. Yeah. Does, that, does the peptide also help with that? With well, it's issues? good if it helps you lose weight. Yes, because fat causes inflammation. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a, I call it fat flammation. So fat cells aren't just these jiggly little pinch and inch things, right? Mm -hmm. They actually are quite metabolically active. What I mean by that is um, although they don't burn a lot of energy, they're storing it. They produce a lot of uh, proteins that cause inflammation. Mm -hmm. They're called cytokines. And these proteins can go throughout your body. They raise systemic inflammation. And chronic inflammation is the common denominator of all age-related disorders. Mm -hmm. So here you have a situation where you're overweight, and we know all the risks that causes, right? Mm -hmm. And then you add to the fact that it increases inflammation, which is another leading cause of a lot of problems. You really are getting kind of a, a, a dual process going on. It's causing disease. You got the weight and you got the inflammation uh, and that affects your skin. Wow. Inflammation makes your skin look bad. As a matter of fact, women, uh, and when it comes to skin studies, they mostly looked at women, but women who are overweight in their 20s have more skin issues in their 40s. Mm. Wow, that can be a dangerous thing. Yeah, so I'm curious. Um, it definitely helps control your appetite. If someone were to be taking this and it was helping them control their appetite, they lost the weight that they were looking to lose and then they decided to get off of it, would it be easy for them to go back to kind of controlling their appetite? Well, that would be, the yeah. I mean, you don't want to be stuck on a pill for the rest of your life. Um, and so the goal is when you're doing something like the peptide is you also are learning better lifestyle uh, habits, but you have better eating habits, better exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and in general, when you have leaner uh, tissue in your body, more muscle mass, uh, you do have better control of hormones and neurotransmitters that do influence appetite. Mm -hmm. But that may take some time. So that's where the pill comes in. So you lose some weight, uh, you're used to that new lifestyle, and eventually maybe a year later, you're not needing the capsule.